What is up guys? Welcome to another BIOS video. And today we're checking out the BIOS here on the ASRock X570 PG Velocita motherboard. Now, as I always say, this BIOS should be pretty much the same across all of ASRock's X570 motherboards, as well as their B550 motherboards. Obviously, the layout might look a little bit different depending on you know what series of motherboards you have. And obviously there are some differences between X570 and B550, but overall the settings and layout should be the same. Now for everybody who wants to know how do I access this menu or how do I get into the BIOS, when you turn your computer on, just keep on smashing that delete button and eventually you'll be loaded into the BIOS. It's really that simple. Just keep on hitting delete and you'll eventually get into the BIOS. Now, the first thing that I noticed about this BIOS, just like we've seen with most ASRock B550 and X570 motherboards, is that there's no easy mode. For some reason on AMD, ASRock is not putting in an easy mode. You know, an easy mode just makes it easy for first time users or people who aren't familiar with the BIOS to, you know, set your XMP profile, set your boot priority, um, you know, just really easy things that you might want to do before you load Windows. For some reason, again, we, we saw it on their uh, Z490 boards. So I don't know why they haven't carried that over to X570 and B550, but you don't have that. So when you do load into the BIOS, you'll just have this main screen here. And this is gonna show you your BIOS version, your processor type, uh, your speed, your microcode update, and then just information on your memory. The next tab over is OC Tweaker. And in here is everything to do with overclocking and tuning your system and all that kind of stuff. So overclock bus mode, you won't have to change at all. I would leave it on auto because most people aren't gonna be overclocking using their bus speed. So if we did set it to manual, this will allow you to change your BCLK. Again, most people don't change that when they're doing basic overclocking. So we'll put that back to auto. Now, what you do wanna do if you are overclocking, CPU frequency and voltage change. You're gonna change this to manual. And then this allows us to change your frequency, your CPU frequency and your voltage. So say, you know, we're running at 3,800 megahertz. We wanna change that to say 4,500, oops, 4,500 megahertz. And then we change our voltage to say something like 1.35. That'd be a simple overclock, very easy to do. Um, we'll go down here, SOC, Uncore OC mode. You can change and select these. Um, same with the different voltages here. You can go ahead and change these. DRAM information, this brings up basically the information on your memory. You really don't need to go into this to do anything, but if you wanna see like all of your timings and stuff for your memory and all the information on your memory, you can go ahead and see that here. Load DRAM profile, do not get this confused with XMP, which is right below it. DRAM profile are specific profiles that ASRock has put into this board. As you can see, they're just two Corsair uh, kits that they have in here. This is not your XMP profile, so do not change this. Right below that, we do have our XMP profile, which we already have enabled. Um, by default, when you first go into the BIOS, it will be on auto, and then it will just show your profile that's for your memory, select it, and you're good to go. DRAM frequency, again, when you set your XMP profile, you won't have to change this, but if you were overclocking your memory per se, you could you know, change your DRAM frequency. DRAM voltage, same thing. If you were overclocking, you might wanna change your voltage. Infinity fabric and dividers, again, just leave it to auto unless you really wanna change things, but you can change that as you can see. Uh, DRAM timing configuration, again, this is all of your timings. Um, oops. So if you wanted to go ahead and loosen or tighten your timings on your memory, you can do that all right here quite easily. External voltage settings and load line calibration. This is all of your voltages, everything, um, again, if you're doing basic overclocking, you won't need to change most of these things. If you're doing like hardcore overclocking, you might wanna change like your load line calibrations. And over here we can see, you know, what the different levels will do and everything like that. And most of the settings over here, you'll get a description of the setting, which is pretty nice if you're not sure what you're doing. And then we can um, load profiles. So you can see we can 
save and load up to 10 profiles on the board itself and you can load from a usb flash drive which is nice so that's everything in the oc tweaker it is pretty easy to navigate there are only a few settings that you'd really want to change if you were doing some overclocking now we'll go over here to advanced and the first one is cpu configuration this shows us our cpu that we have installed and then all of the different things that it supports we can enable or disable those things um you know pretty simple right there pci configuration uh, just pretty simple right there not much there onboard devices so again this is like your hd audio you can enable or disable front panel audio um, turn off wireless and turn off bluetooth the led buttons you can turn those on or off as well so you know you can mess with different things on the board storage configuration again um SATA controller you can set to a ACHI or RAID. So if you're doing RAID, you would enable RAID there. And then you can see um, all of the different SATA ports and you know you can turn power to those ports on or off. You can just go through them and do that quite easily. Um, and then you'll get a storage list. So we only have one drive installed. You can see your storage list down here. Um, and you know, so if you're having issues with a drive, you can go in here and see if the BIOS is actually, you know, seeing it. Sometimes that happens when you're installing like an M.2 and you don't install it all the way or something happens when you're putting that heatsink on. So it's good to have your devices list right here. Oops. Oh, no, oh, I moved over to tools. Let's go back. Um, ACPI, again, not a whole lot of stuff here, but different settings for that. Trusted computing, um, we don't have a TPM device installed, but if we did, you'd be able to configure it here. AMD PBS, um, again, this is stuff that you typically don't wanna change, but if you did, um, you know, your bus interfaces and things like that, and you can see the uh, firmware version, you know, a lot of times you wanna update, especially um, for security reasons, you wanna update your AMD firmware, so this will show you, you know, what you have installed and, and all of that. Um, AMD overclocking, this isn't, specific overclocking we went over that they have you have to accept this and then you can go into eco mode you can set up precision boost overdrive um you know and do auto disabled enable and advanced you enable it and advanced gives you a little bit more features different limits and, and things like that but we'll just leave that on auto and then ln2 mode um you know if you were doing crazy overclocking with ln2 there is an ln2 mode um, you can enable it or disable it. That's basically the options you have there. And then we have AMD CBS, and these are all different options. There's not a whole lot in here. Um, you know, C states, power supply, idle controls, things like that. Uh, memory addressing, you know, clear memory, DRAM mappings. Again, this is like stuff that you won't really have to touch and I probably have never touched ever in a BIOS. So um, you have all that there. Um, you can also set like full HD uh, BIOS. You can enable or disable that. Um, but then we'll go over to tools. So you have RGB LEDs. You can configure your RGB LEDs before you even install Windows. Um, so you can set the modes and, and things like that. Um, so if you don't want to install their RGB software, you technically don't have to if you don't want to. Easy RAID installer, this will help you install RAID. SSD secure erase tool, this allows you to secure erase an SSD. So if you were, um, if you, you know, were selling an old SSD or getting rid of one or sending one back or something, a secure erase, you can go ahead and do that. NVMe sanitation tool, it's kind of like the same thing. Um, you know, if you have an NVMe drive that you're selling, you want to run this. And then you have Instant Flash, which we actually use to easily flash the BIOS. So you put your BIOS file on a flash drive, you uh, install that flash drive, of course, in the system, and then you run Instant Flash and it easily flashes your BIOS quite easy there. So that is your tools. Hardware monitor is a real-time monitor for temperatures, voltages, and fan speeds. Um, you can go ahead and see all of that and it's pretty easy to set up. I don't think there is fantastic tuning and fan tuning so you can actually tune all the system or all the fans that are connected to your system as well. Again, very, very easy to do here. So you have all of that and you can go into your fan settings and set like standard performance full speed um, for the different fans that you do have connected. 
Under security, you can set a supervisor password and user password. You can also set up secure boot under boot. Um, this is all of your boot option priority. So you can see, um, you know, you can set up different boot options. We only have one option because we only have one drive here, but you can go ahead and set that up, set up fast boot, things like that. And then under exit, we have, you can save and load uh, settings pretty easily. You can also hit F10 on the keyboard, which will save and load easily once again. Boot override, um, which I love to see. So if we did have a flash drive installed, we could actually select it down here and it's gonna boot to that flash drive first. This is great for installing Windows. I always say that, or installing any operating system um, via flash drive. So you have that boot override. So when it installs and does the restart, you don't have to hurry up and pull that out. It will just, um, you know, boot right to your hard drive after it installs from a flash drive, which I like to see. Now, this BIOS is, is very easy to navigate. Um, it's pretty easy. I honestly, like I said, I would have liked to have seen in easy mode just for the fact that a lot of new users have no clue what any of this stuff means. Um, and here in easy mode just makes it easy. Like, you know, you want to enable your XMP profile. You want to set your boot priority. Um, you may want to mess with fans and RGB and you have to dive through a bunch of menus to do that with this BIOS. Easy mode would have just solved all of that. Also, it is a little confusing for some people. You go in here, you're like, overclock mode, I need to change that. And that's just for the bus speed. I know it does say bus speed there, but it's a lot. Um, other BIOSes make it more apparent which certain things are. So that is pretty much it for this BIOS. Now, if you guys have any questions about this BIOS, go ahead and leave it in the comment section below. And uh, if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you hit that thumbs up and continue to subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video.